Hi there, it's Baz. I've got a ukulele with something, uh, another instrument review for you. This one is um, one of the most unusual things I've, I've reviewed. Um, uh, you spend four years or so doing ukulele reviews and you never come across a bass ukulele. I'm no bass player, maybe that's the reason. And then in the space of a month and a half, two, two come along uh, at once like buses. You may have seen my Kamoa uh, ukulele bass review. I really liked that instrument. Um, the review got some pretty mixed opinions. I liked it because it used standard steel string bass uh, steel strings, um, which, unlike these Aquila sort of polyurethane things, I just think is so much nicer on the fingers. Uh, I think they sound cleaner. Uh, the downside to that is to get the tension there in the ukulele. It's tuned like a bass E A D G. Uh, as this is, but an octave above. Now, some people seem to think that that was the work of the devil. Um, I think that's crazy. I feel it sounded bassy enough um, with some amp tweaking as well. It would stand out as a bass sound in a in a band quite easily. Uh, I thought it was brilliant, actually. Um, and then this one arrived, which is which just completely threw me sideways. This is made by a guy called Darren Field uh, at a company. His company. Buzzards Field Bases. Um, I say made. Um, he's not made all of this. What what he's done is he's taken, uh, in this case, which is the Afan model, uh, he's taken a Tanglewood, uh, pretty entry level Tanglewood Spanish guitar in a half size, kind of similar to a baritone ukulele size, so similar to the uh, to the Kamar, and he's converted it uh, to be a bass guitar, a bass ukulele, a true bass ukulele. Because this is tuned the same as the Carla U basses, E A D G, but on that lower octave, so like a like a double bass uh, or a true bass guitar. Um, and uh, he, this is the Afan model, which comes in this uh, rather startling blue colour, uh, also in red. If this isn't your football team, um, but I'd like this. <laughs> I think it's a I think it's a cool blue colour. Um, and it's a fairly standard guitar body. Um, this is made from uh, laminate spruce top and laminate linden wood sides. Uh, he does make others as well in slightly different sizes. Uh, he does a kit where you can just pick up the parts for the conversion, things like the nut and the bridge, um, and do it yourself to any, any small scale guitar you choose. And I think he's also open to offers for ideas on how we will make that conversion for you if there's certain things you want or if you can source an instrument for him to work with. Um, I think it's a fantastic concept and he, he actually started by doing it because he thought the prices of Carly U bases were ludicrous. Um, I agree. <laughs> I think they're very expensive for what they are. I think they're also very difficult to get hold of at times. I think their supply lines are dreadful. Um, admittedly, you're not going to pick one of these off the shelf because uh, Darren needs to build it for you. Uh, but let's just have a look at what he's done. So he's taken that basic guitar. He's kept with the uh, the saddle, which has got a pickup in it, a standard saddle mount. But because of the thickness of these strings, these are Aquila Thundergut uh, ukulele bass strings, you're never going to be able to tie them through here. So he's fitted this mounting place with a uh, plate with holes drilled into the body for the knots of the strings to hold that in place. It's a pretty sturdy piece of kit. Um, and then found that those strings just fit the width of this neck pretty much perfectly. Um, he removed the standard nut and created this kind of notched piece of wood which is removable and adjustable to hold the strings in the right places. And then when we come up to the headstock, well, this being a guitar, it normally had six. Uh, so what he did was he, he sawed through here, taken the top of the headstock off and removed the piece of wood from the middle. Uh, to remove the area where they, those other two pegs were and then put the top back on. Also sawed through the mounting plates for the uh, for the tuners, which you can see there, and screws them back in place to hold the headstock in one piece. I think that's really clever. Um, I really do. Um, this model in this spec comes with a strap pin and four band EQ. Uh, he does other specs as well. The standard spec for the AFAN is about £170. Uh, in this spec, £187, and um, it, 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 it's really, I don't know how he came up with the idea of doing this, but I'm glad he did, because I, I think it's clever and I like a bit of innovation like this. Um, 
he explains that with the bigger body, this is a bigger body than a, a Carly U bass. It's got a lot more uh, acoustic resonance. While I'm plugged in here, the amplifier is off. So this is just purely straight into the microphone on the Mac. Um, I warn you, I'm not a bass player. It's, um, it's not going to cut through a band, but for home practice, it's absolutely perfect. Uh, about as loud as the Kamoa, but certainly louder than a Carly U bass or any Carly U bass that I've played. Uh, and certainly louder than their solo body ones. Um, plugged in, if I just turn the amp up, it's a little bit out of tune, but it's tuned the ADG on that lower register, as I said. And I've not got much volume on this at all because it will feed back because the, the speaker is right next to me here. But and you can play around with presence. Good actually, um, on a par with the car. Um, I don't like the string still. Really. This is just my personal opinion. I'm not running this this huge down because of it. I just find these stick to my fingers and kind of roll when I when I pluck uh, pluck them. Um, but it sounds really clean. Uh, he said he had some concerns about intonation on the on the E string. I didn't notice that at all. But I certainly got some good punch on D and G. Um, other warning he gave me was that because of the tension of these things, that these standard guitar um, pinion cogs can shear, and he even supplies you with some spare ones in case that happens. Although he does explain that if you treat it properly, tune it properly, or don't, don't over tune it, you'll be fine. Um, this one's fine. I do wonder though if that's a concern he has, whether he wants to think about putting bass tuners on there, which are a bit sturdier. Um, but you know, it, it, that's really it. I think it. It works really well. No fret markers on the face, but we've got them there on the side, which is good. Um, there are some flaws in the finish, but I can't um, I can't raise that with Darren because that's because of the way the guitar came to him. Um, it's a little bit dusty and, and sort of utilitarian, I suppose the word is here, where he's, he's locked that together. And you might not like the nut, although I do. Um, but you know, it, it is what it is. He's made that conversion. He's made it very well, and he's made it for a really good price. Um, I think I think this is a bit of a winner, actually. Uh, if I was in the market for a bass, I think I'd be buying this one often, uh, as it is. I believe this is going to a raffle at the Grand Northern Ukulele Festival, so somebody's going to get uh, lucky nits on it. Um, but I, I just really like what he's doing, the fact that he, he went to the trouble of creating something without having to build a whole instrument. Um, why build a whole instrument when you can use something that's ready-made and ready to go? Um, if you like your basses, and uh, you like the idea of a Carly U bass but can't find one or don't want to spend the amount of money they're charging, I think this is absolutely fantastic as a replacement, and it's cheaper, and it's keeping a local... British tradesman going with a fantastic idea, and I think that's always worth supporting. Uh, so there we are. This is the Buzzards Field Afan ukulele bass. Um, I've been thoroughly enjoying playing with this. Uh, I just like a good idea when it comes together. <laughs>